Okay, so I wanted to do a tutorial about PyQGIS and how you can do that from the Python console with MQGIS. Now before I start, I'm sorry there's an event going on in my building and it's really loud. Um, so hopefully there's not too much background noise. I'll try to clean it up as much as I can. Uh, let's go ahead and before we start, I also want to show you that I have this tutorial available on my website, so opensourceoptions.com. Um, if you go to Tutorials and Python, we have PyQGIS here, and this is going to be the, the first one in a series of tutorials, and it's called Loading and Symbolizing Raster Layers. And so this is how we do, we're going to do this with PyQGIS. All right, so that's all here. Um, there may be a GitHub repo, which we'll have a link here if there is. Anyway, let's go ahead and we'll get started. So we're back in QGIS. The first thing is we want to open up the Python console. So go to plugins and open the Python console. Now you have an option here which is really handy to show the editor and to use the code editor. And I'm going to do that because I like to be able to save my code if I want to. Um, now let's just try something. I'm using Python version 3.7 I believe and so if we come down here we can type import uh, sys and then we can go sys.version and you can get your Python version just like that. One other thing we'll do is we'll set this up a little bit so if we go and click on the options here we can get some autocomplete options um, this is the threshold, so I'm going to do two. We can select from document, from API files, uh, or from doc and APIs, which will give you variable names and the API autocomplete, which is what I want. And then you can also choose some automatic parentheses uh, insertion. So we're going to go there. There are a few more options here, like with the colors. I don't really worry about that. There's your console, and then you can preload some APIs, but we're or prepare APIs. We're not going to worry about any of those things. Um, okay, you can also pull this off. Uh, and so that's what I'll do. I'm going to pull this off and we'll write the code and then we can slide it out of the way to see our QGIS window. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want the name of a raster file. And I have one here on my computer that I'm going to use. Um, one I've been using for hydrological modeling. And hopefully that's the right file. Okay, so once we've got that file, the next thing we're gonna do uh, is we just wanna load that file into QGIS. And to do that, uh, we need to get some statistics, first of all, so that we can stretch our color ramp accordingly. So we're gonna do our layer, uh, data provider and then we need to get should be statistics let me just double check that for you guys sorry that is banned statistics and the autocomplete is not working there um, so then what we need to give it uh, is we need to go Q or we need to give it the band number, and then we're going to go QGS uh, raster band stats dot all, and that'll give us all the statistics. Okay, and then uh, let's come down. We just want the minimum and maximum, so let's do it right here. We'll do min equals stats dot minimum and max equals stats dot maximum and let's just go ahead and we'll print the min and the max over here uh, to our console to make sure that works correctly so let's go ahead here we'll click run see how things go okay and we've got an error and for some reason it's not showing up let me just check what that error is Okay, my mistake. So this should be minimum value. That's why it wasn't showing up. This should be maximum value. So I'll go ahead and run that, and then now it should print those out. There you go. You can see our minimum and our maximum. 
match what's up here. And I've added that in twice now. I'm going to go ahead and remove these. And then I'm going to uh, get rid of this line. So while we're developing, this might be a little bit of a pain because we're going to remove this every time we load it. Um, we could write a line of code at the end to remove it. But once we get to the symbolization, you know, that's going to that's going to get annoying as well. Okay, so now to symbolize this, um, we're going to make a function uh, to shade our color ramp. And so we're going to make a QGS color ramp oops, shader. It's going to be an empty one. And the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to set the color ramp type. And we want this uh, to be interpolated color ramp. And so to do that, we're going to do QGS color ramp shader interpolated. The other options are discrete and exact. And so discrete will basically give you bins for colors and exact will give you unique values. We're going to use interpolated because I have this DEM uh, and it has continuous data, so we just want to stretch those values from the minimum to the maximum. Okay, now we need to create some color ramp items to add to the color ramp to define things. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to go QGS color ramp shader dot color ramp we just want an item, color ramp item, and we're going to start with our minimum value. So this is the minimum value from up here, the minimum value in our raster. And I'm going to do Q color, and this is going to be kind of a boring color ramp. It's going to stretch from uh, zero, from a green value at zero to a yellow value at, uh, or not at zero, uh, a green value with the minimum value to a yellow color uh, at the maximum value. Okay, so we've added that item, and now we're going to add another item here, and so we're going to add another QGS color ramp shader and a color ramp item. And we're going to do max Q color uh, 0, oh, no, 255, 255, 0. And then close that up. All right, so that gives us the colors for our color ramp. Now, maybe in a future tutorial, what we'll do is we'll write a function that allows you to automate getting those statistics and create a little better color ramp than what we're doing here, but this will, will do it for our purposes. Okay, so now we need to add the color ramp list to our um, color ramp shader. So that color ramp item list, LST. Uh, simple as that. And then we need to create a shader We're going to make a raster shader. And the next thing we need to do is apply our color ramp to the raster. And we do that with shader.set shader set raster shader function. And FNC. Okay, and now we have that shader ready to go. We just need to add this to a renderer and apply it to our raster and it should load up correctly. Okay, so let's create that renderer. And that's going to equal QGS single band pseudo color renderer. And then we need to do our layer dot data provider. Give it a value of one for the band. And then we're going to give it our shader. Okay, and then do our layer dot set renderer 
renderer. Okay. So that should give it to us. We should see a yellow and green raster load up here. Let's click run and see what happens. And we have some invalid syntax. Let me just check on that. All right, sorry, I forgot some parentheses here, it looks like. Uh, let's add those in and let's click run, see what other errors we get. Okay, so we have another error. Let me just check that again. Okay, and Big mistake there, I just didn't put an equal sign in, so let's uh, click run again. Okay, there we go, looks like this one's worked. So as you can see, um, now I've added this DEM in uh, with the green to yellow values. Uh, it doesn't have those minimum maximum values on there right now, but we've successfully used PyQGIS to add that in. And uh, now we have a script here so that if we want to replicate that uh, and do this for any layer, well, we can use this code and it will work for any file name that we put in there. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm going to keep doing some of these tutorials with PyQGIS, so if you have anything specific that you want me to cover with PyQGIS, uh, please just leave a comment below and I will try to get to that. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate it, and if you want to see these tutorials as they come out, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Thanks.